Our next speaker wrote his first program at the age of 13 using an IBM AT personal computer that he received in honor of his bar mitzvah in 1985. He lives in Tel Aviv, right next to the beach, and is a big fan of any type of surfing. Please welcome Checkpoint's IoT product manager, Itzik Feglovich. Okay. <sighs> Guten Morgen, Vienna. How are you doing? Wow, I'm so happy to be here. So excited to come over this stage. What a great event. Now, I would like to start, first of all, by thanking you. Thanking you for waking up this morning and coming to this great event and coming to this presentation after last night's party. It was a good party, right? Those checkpoint guys do know how to party. Amazing people. I can see here many familiar faces that I remember from the bar last night, yeah? So thank you again for coming today. Now, just in case anyone woke up this morning with a huge hangover, like I did, don't worry, I have here in my pocket aspirin, so don't be shy. If anyone needs aspirin or still suffer from hangover, please tell me. During the last couple of days, I've met amazing people. And we had really great discussions talking about all of those cybersecurity challenges that all of us are facing today. And one of the topics that just kept repeating itself in every discussion is IoT cybersecurity. People keep asking me, Itzik, what's going on with IoT cybersecurity? What Checkpoint are doing about IoT cybersecurity? We have a huge number of IoT devices inside our network, and we need to protect those IoT devices. So can you help us? Can Checkpoint help us? Now, one of the questions that I'm always asking when meeting with a customer is, OK, you send a huge number of IoT devices, but do you really know how many IoT devices do you have inside your network today? In a typical enterprise of 10,000 employees, you will find around 20,000 IoT devices. 20,000. We have security cameras, smart sensors, smart elevators. We have IPTVs. We have IP phones, printers, faxes, and many other IoT devices. In a typical hospital of only 500 beds, you will find around 10,000 IoT devices. Most of them, by the way, will be connected medical devices. We have MRI machines, CT devices, X-rays, infusion pumps, patient monitors, and many other devices. And in a typical factory of only 2,000 workers, you will find around 5,000 industrial IoT devices. Now, how are all of those IoT devices connected to your network? What protocols are they using? What traffic flowing between the different IoT devices inside your network? Can you control those devices? Can you secure them? The IoT devices are very hard to secure. Most of those devices don't even have basic security capabilities. Many of those devices are based on default passwords, and hey, no one actually going and changing those default passwords, 1234, 8888. Have anyone here ever changed a default password in one of the IoT devices that you have inside your network? And many of those devices are just simple, unmanaged, invisible devices that are connected to our network. And we don't have any way to control them. And the attackers, they know that. And they're using those devices. They're using those devices in order to get into your networks. Because those IoT devices are actually opening a backdoor into your network. Check it out. According to Microsoft, only a few months ago, they found out that a hackers group from Russia using those devices, they're using IP phones and printers that are based on default passwords in order to get into your networks. I'm sure that all of you are familiar with the Mirai attack, 2016, targeting hundreds of thousands of IoT devices. But did you know that only last year, more than 16 new variants of Mirai attack have been discovered, targeting now specifically your enterprise IoT devices? This is a typical IPTV that you will find in almost any meeting room today, and I'm sure that you have similar IPTVs inside your networks. 
few months ago, one of our customers connected the similar IPTV to the internet. The, uh, it was the end of the quarter. Uh, the HR department decided to have a really nice event for one of the sales teams. It was March last year. They had to stay till late in the office. So what they did, they brought the pizzas and the beers. And on that specific day, there was a very important football match between my favorite team, by the way, Barcelona Football Club and Real Madrid. I'm sure that you know that this game is a very important game, also known as the Super Clasico, the El Clasico. So they had a great evening. By the way, Barcelona won. I was <laughs> quite happy. The thing is that after that, no one called the cane, the IT department, and tell them, OK, now you can disconnect this IPTV from the internet. Because no one does that. You know what I'm talking about? The IT guys, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. We are great in opening those tickets all day long, asking you to connect me to this service and to this application. We're never calling you and asking you to disconnect us from something after finish using it. At any case, a few weeks later, they had another meeting in the same meeting room. And one of the guests wanted to share a very large marketing video file. So he brought a USB device and plugged it into the same IPTV. This device had a malware inside that managed to spread into this IPTV. So now they have a device with a malware inside that is connected to their network. Now, the thing is that this is unmanaged and invisible device, meaning there is no endpoint protection running inside this IPTV. And if you will look for it in the security management system, you will not find it. This is a shadow device. Now, if you will go to the internet and you will search IPTV hacking, and please do so, test me, you will find hundreds of ready-to-use guides. You will also find this very interesting application that enables you to record everything that goes on in this meeting room through this IPTV. It will look like the TV is turned off, but actually the application is running in the background recording everything. Now, what if this IPTV sits in your legal department or in your VP sales office or, you know what, in your CEO office? This can be great to listen all day long to what's going on inside your CEO office. And we have now the new IPTVs with the built-in IP camera so we also can view what's going on inside his office. I have a question, by the way, I need your help. Can someone here please explain me how to run antivirus application inside my IPTV? The reason I'm asking is because I've seen this tweet a few months ago. And the vendor of my IPTV actually tells me, Itzik, you need to be very careful. Someone can hack into your IPTV. So you need to run antivirus application inside it. I have a great IPTV back at my home, Ultra HD, very smart, all the features. I remember myself sitting at my home, looking at my IPTV, looking at the remote control, and thinking to myself, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to run antivirus application inside my IPTV. There is no antivirus button on the remote control. Believe me, I know that because I've looked for that button. There is none. Now, this is only one example out of many, and I can share with you really crazy cases that I'm facing on a daily basis working with our customers, cases that are related to smart office devices, smart building devices, medical devices, industrial devices, and any other type of IoT devices. The question is, okay, so what? What now? What should we do? You have a huge number of IoT devices inside your network. Those devices are unmanaged and invisible devices. Those devices are connected to your network, and those devices are very easy to hack into. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really proud to introduce you Checkpoint, new IoT cybersecurity solution. Our solution consists of three components. The first component is real-time IoT risk analysis. We need to start by finding all of those IoT devices inside your network, finding the IPTVs, the security cameras, the industrial devices, all the IoT devices inside your network, and then analyze, analyzing the risk that each of those devices poses inside your network. Then we need to apply zero trust IoT segmentation, zero trust, because you cannot trust those IoT devices. You can't trust the IPTV. You can't trust the MRI machine in the hospital. And you can't trust the industrial device in the factory. You can't trust any of those IoT devices. So we need to be able to apply a policy that will tell exactly what each of those IoT devices can do inside your network. And the third component is multi-layer IoT threat prevention. We should be able 
test to identify and block IoT malicious intents, and we should do that in two layers, inside the network itself using checkpoint security gateways, and also inside the IoT devices using our new nano-agent technology that you've already heard a lot about. Now, the key element for all of those components is automation, because without automation, it will not work. We are talking about thousands of IoT devices and hundreds of security rules that need to be written. So now, using Checkpoint IoT cybersecurity solution, you will benefit from two security functions. The first security function is that we will prevent unauthorized access and malicious intents from reaching your IoT devices, from reaching the IPTVs, from reaching the security cameras, from reaching any of the IoT devices inside your network. And the second security function is that in case of infected IoT devices, and hey, we should accept the fact that probably Already today, you have infected IoT devices inside your network. We should identify those devices and isolate them, prevent them from compromising other devices and network elements. So we need to start by finding all those IoT devices inside your network. And in order to do that, we've developed a unique API that enables us to collect any type of information from any IoT discovery engine. And you can see here a list of the IoT discovery engine vendors who we are already working with. We have a full integration with all of those vendors. And now using the IoT discovery engine, we can automatically identify every IoT device inside your network. This is an IP camera, this is the vendor, this is uh, the operating system, and much more information and for all the IoT devices inside your network. And we're sending this information to an IoT risk analysis engine where we're analyzing this information, getting more information from our gateways, analyzing the IoT traffic inside your network, and we are also going to use a new firmware analyzer tool that will enable us to analyze the binary firmwares of the different IoT devices. And we're going to provide you all of this information through a very intuitive dashboard. So you will be able now to see the IoT devices inside your network, you will be able to see the risks that those devices pose inside your network, and you will be able to get a detailed risk report for each of those IoT devices. So now that we can tell what's going on inside your network, we should apply a suitable policy. The thing is that if you will try and configure this policy manually, it will be a nightmare. We are talking about thousands of devices and months someone needs to sit down and configure all of those crazy security rules and probably you will miss something there will be misconfigurations and be honest have anyone here do really do you really know what are the right security rules for the iot devices inside your network you don't really know that so we've developed an automated iot policy builder that automatically generate a policy that is perfectly suited to your IoT environment. And we're doing that based on the information that we're getting from the devices, from the network, learning the IoT traffic inside your network, from other customers who might be using the same IoT devices like you do, so we can learn from their policies. And we're going to use an IoT intelligent cloud, and we're going to hold in this cloud a huge knowledge base of predefined and dynamic IoT practices, blueprints for the different IoT devices. So the third component is multi-layer IoT threat prevention. And as I said, we can do that inside the network and also inside the IoT devices. Now, looking into the IoT network, the challenge will be that you're going to have a huge number of IoT devices. And those devices are very diverse devices. For example, there are many types of operating systems that those devices are based on. I've personally seen devices that still runs Windows 95. Only a few weeks ago, I have to tell you the story. Only a few weeks ago, I've met with a customer, a hospital. They have an IoT device that still runs DOS operating system. DOS, can you believe that? Now, for the young people here in the audience, DOS is a very old operating system that old fellows like myself used to work with way long back in the past, more than 30 years ago. This is how old some of those IoT devices are. So in order to solve that, we are automatically configuring our security gateway so that they will be perfectly suited to your IoT environment. And we can do that now because we know now what IoT devices you have inside your network and what threats, what CVEs we should look for. And we should address not only the known attacks but also the unknown attacks that are very common within IoT environments. And in order to do that, we're going to analyze the IoT network behavior and the IoT devices behavior, looking for anomalies. 
the IPTV shouldn't talk with the coffee machine inside your cafeteria. Doesn't make any sense. So once we will find those anomalies, we will be able to identify IoT malicious intents and then to automatically update our policy in order to block them. Looking into the IoT devices themselves, we can also protect those devices using our new nano-agent technology. A very small software component is being integrated into the IoT device, and we are already working with IoT manufacturers and IoT vendors in order to support that. And this very small software component inside the IoT device will automatically identify the firmware inside the device, and then through our Infinity Next Cloud, we'll analyze this firmware, we'll identify the risk that this firmware poses inside the device, and will automatically load back a tailor fit and nano agent into this device. So we will pro protect the device from the inside. So to summarize, we're going to release this solution this year, and we already have the first customers, amazing customers, by the way, and the feedbacks are really great. So this is what I would like us to do. Can, can I get some lights here, please? Everyone that have IoT devices inside your network, please raise your hand. It can be IP phones, IP TVs. All of you have IP TVs, printers, faxes, medical devices, industrial devices. Basically, all of you have IoT devices inside your network. Please do not hesitate. Contact ourselves, contact our partners, and ask them how to protect those IoT devices that you already have today inside your network. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.